Hello everyone, welcome back to another part of the Shanghai Tower Grasshopper tutorial. In this part, we're going to be doing a short one. We're going to be focusing on trying to uh, fix the last thing that is still left standing of the outer facade. As you can see, uh, there's still a gap in between our floors, which is the infill gap. Now, um, I'm already showing this on the screen. We have the general gap infills, which is if I turn it back on slightly, you see that we stopped at the floor just below the crown. Now, you could argue that we could just extend this because we limit it here or somewhere in the crown floor. Because as you look at the original curve, it goes all the way up. So you could say let's enable that. But also remember that we've done some slight modification to these. Uh, to the cutoff, uh, remember that soft transition we did in the previous part, and obviously the gap infill doesn't go all the way into the air, as you can see on this uh, left side. So we need to slightly remake this in a different way. Let me turn it quickly back off, and I'm going to turn this back off. So, oh, turn that back off. Okay. So we're just going to create a slightly modified version of our gap infills in order to make sure that they that the gap fills in uh, perfectly and neatly and always correspond to whatever shape we will have in the crown floor. And since we're talking about just a few floors, uh, this should be easy to make with the method that we're going to be using. To start off, let me quickly walk you through the idea of how we're going to approach this. Uh, if I quickly switch to a side view, maybe this one. So what we want to do is, I'm going to turn on my pen. What we can do is we just going to make a plane on the floor where they will intersect like that, right? And obviously that was not drawn, okay. And then what we're going to do is make that plane intersect with the floor and then we can combine. Uh, first off, we're going to intersect, uh, uh, for example, have the first plane intersect the top one of that. And then the second part, we're going to have the plane intersect uh, the bottom of that and then we can combine those two together to create our infill. So with that said, let me clean that and we'll move on to our canvas right here. So obviously we need to identify on which floor do we want that plane. So for that we're going to have to take, uh, we can use this, we definitely need the crown floor and the height, which I don't see it here yet, but I'm just going to copy these two for now. And I I might just copy it right here, since it's more or less like a continuation of that. And the next thing we want to do is to get, let me see, the crown floor, the crown, we can also get that one, I think, in order to identify, oh, yeah, I did not do a right Control shift here, or we'll apply that here. You could have just copied the whole thing actually. Um, and now, to create a plane, what we can do is uh, we can take any of these top, but what I want to do instead is I'm just going to take an outline, doesn't matter which outline actually. You can actually take this one because I just want a point that's sitting on that. Um, on that floor. And I believe I did not copy. Let me do that again. Control C. And we'll just copy and paste that here. So it really doesn't matter which one you pick again. And now what I want to do is we want to list item this. We just want to select it. Although we do need this one also because of the floors that we will be selecting. So to start, you're going to be starting from here. And the count is going to be like that. So if I quickly select uh, to rather graph this, we'll decide later. So for now, we don't want to graph. And I'll turn that back off. As you can see, we selected the top one already. We might have to reduce this by two because we don't want the very top one. There's nothing to intersect in the very top. So let's see what happens if I do minus two. Yeah, we'll get rid of the top one. Okay, 
So just to show you what does the S show, 120, because it's uh, the floor minus the crown floor. Uh, might as well just give uh, like this. So we got 120 minus 8 gives you 120, and that can start with the floor. If you have trouble having a floor start with this, you might fiddle around with this, but seeing as this, sh if you had followed along, then you shouldn't have to make a uh, slight offset or modification to it. It will it will just be a line as you can see on my screen. Uh, we do have to apply an expression here though uh, like we did because we don't want the very top floor because then we'll be selecting 126 obviously it's the top one. So with that being selected what we can do is now we do an endpoint or we can do a curve we have evaluate it doesn't matter anything that can give you a point basically and then we're gonna do an XY because we want an XY plane. Again, it doesn't matter which point you take as long as it's a point on that line. Now that we have our curve, or actually our plane, sorry, we want to make sure that we can intersect correctly. Now, you might be tempted to intersect the whole thing. Uh, speaking of that, we need to get the crown first, and I believe it's somewhere here. We don't need the V strike because that don't correspond. Oh, I do need to move this all the way here because I do need these inputs. So uh, let me copy that like so because we do need this geometry. And we're going to put these to hidden so we don't have spaghetti lines all over our script. All right. Now a little bit OCD, so I'm just going to quickly do that. Okay, uh, first of all, we need to correctly uh, sort these panels. So I'm going to quickly bring up a param viewer to visualize. So we got six branches, and this one has also... Ah, it's a different branching. Oh, that's a pity. Okay, uh, is there anything we could do here, though? Not like, because we flattened this part, and this one was for the top. Maybe you could have done something here, but we flatten this in order to get that. Mm, we could use sorting process, but I would rather we fix it here. So let me see. Um, this from this part, I'm just going to modify the old part just uh, for a second. Uh, from this part on, we are only working to get the last panel over here. So we could actually, uh, let me make some more space over here because the data tree we have here is quite, is already structured. If you can see the data structure, the tree, the branching structure, it starts with zero in the first level and then it ends at six. So we, in the end, if you count that, we should have seven primary branches or high level branches. Uh, it's the problem where we get flattened here. I might want to flatten here, but then you get the problem is that it does not select the right curve. So I'm just going to quickly insert a new component. I'm going to flatten it here instead and send that back there. I'm just going to quickly... Uh, I'm going to remove this in case I accidentally copy the whole part like I did in the previous video. So now we can unflatten that part. And what this does, it eliminates the top one. So we have to deal with that later. Um, but for now, we let's simplify this instead. We'll look at the param viewer. Okay. So every item has its own branch, so that's fine. Uh, what we want to do here now is to trim the tree, so we'll do a data a trim tree. I should actually leave the param viewer on so you can actually see what's going on. So this is without the trim tree, 137 branches, and if I do the trim tree, after it has been simplified, that's very important, otherwise if you don't do that, well in this case it works fine. <laughs> uh, because we only have two branches. But if you have more branches, you will have only trimmed one branch. 
but if you simplify it, it will cut down all unnecessary branches and should give you these two branches alone, which will ensure that the trim tree will work exactly as intended. And we're going to quickly move this a little bit forward like that. I also need to figure out in order for us to eliminate the last panel from this whole batch. We might take the chance or the risk to assume that the last panel is always going to be the last item of the last branch. If that were the case, then we should be able to filter that out. And uh, let me see. Actually, mm, yeah, we could filter it out in that way. So we're just going to quickly do a, uh, let me see, a tree statistics, tree stat, tree statistics. Uh, what this will give us is let me open up a panel. Uh, it will show basically data uh, of our tree that we plugged in from. So this is the P or the path. So we want to select this last path. And it also select how many items are within each branch and the number of flats, which is you can get the same number if you do a list length from the P. So uh, it's more like a quality of life features that you can just quickly access in that way. Uh, OK, so with that being said, well, we have this, we have this. We just need to isolate the first branch and then isolate the last item. So first, we're going to do a split mask. Split mask. There we go. And we're going to do a list item. We're going to do a double splitting, actually. Or uh, let me see what happens if I don't do the split, uh, the trim tree first, because we know it's going to be the last one. Maybe we could get away with that if I do this, right? And then uh, this is going to get a little bit messy. Um, I'm going to look at the path. I want the last path, or at least I hope the item that we want to call is in the last path. So we're going to quickly do that. So we want to select 619, OK? And I will reverse this. I give us 619. If I split the tree like that. And we are getting that last item without disrupting our data tree. So that's good. Um, that seems to work like this. So we'll keep it like this, obviously. So the P is obviously the one that we don't want. So I'm just going to take from the end. And we should have all the items we want without doing any complex thing with just three components, basically. Uh, so this one we can actually delete. And let me see. And we just need to find a way to include this one back into this data tree, which actually maybe we can do an item replace instead of calling it. Now that I think about it, this is pure improvising. I have not done this exact same step in my previous script. so. Uh, I'm actually working this as I go. Let me see. Item to replace with the index to replace. Ah, but this is the index. I don't think it takes that. Yeah, it doesn't. OK, that's fine. That is fine. Well, we could actually replace, if we flatten this, while we having that, we could uh, restructure the data branches. So if I do, for example, partitioning list, actually, uh, we're going to do, let me copy that here. Uh, even though they're the same thing, if I were to do a list length, or actually, if I do, let's let's bring up an item replace back up here. So the item we want to replace with is obviously this very last thing. So I'm just going to plug that in here for now. And the integer we want to replace is going to be the last one. So we can do a double reverse, but I think that gets a little bit confusing. 
and the data tree we want to trim is over here and that way we can get our items per list okay so I want to keep that and the item I want to replace is going to be that one it's going to be the last one so I'm going to quickly do a list length actually is there even an add item if there's an add item to list I swear then we're doing a lot more difficult work than we have to insert oh right we could just do that what does insert give us wait this is not insert this list item where's insert there we go so we have list to modify uh-huh items to insert and the index okay still it's pretending that we're working with single list either we first get rid of the list or split off the list and then modify that part but Either way could work. Um, there, are, I think every method that we can think about now is equally as uh, complex. So without further, we'll just go on with this uh, without wasting any more time. Okay. So we got the number of list. Uh, oh wait, I do need. Give me that. There we go. So how many items we have? One thirty-seven. And we have 137 here, so the item index is 137 minus 1. That's why we get the error because it's overbound. So we just need to come in here and say x minus 1. And we should get that one. No, I'm just going to quickly hide everything. To check that we have the correct list, I'm going to hide that one too. And I still see the panel, so I think it's still on. Ah, there we go. So this is the item that we want. Although it's showing merely the curve while this one is a oh because aha uh -huh. all right 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 of course if you apply a curve uh, component to a surface it just well it gives you the curve so I'm, I should actually use the geometry that is what I had in my mind when I completed this so I'm just gonna plug that in here quickly and since we're using from the same one we could just do this and then I don't need to use that anymore and now ultimately what we can do is we have those three stats uh, I'm just gonna quickly I don't need these two components anymore I'm gonna say partition that list okay based on the numbers that you have in here like that so if I quickly do a tree branch to identify that we have the correct one selected tree branch there we go let's identify okay this is a perfect moment for you to show for me to show what the simplify actually do with this and why I prefer to simplify a lot of things even though sometimes it's not really necessary but it gives me the assurance that the path structure will be in the format that I expect it to be so for example we have here three branches with the data on the last branch so I simplify this it cuts off all the unnecessary branches trims it off and give me a very clean data structure which i can now use here in the data branch so i'm just going to say zero less than eight we don't have eight branches but you know what i mean so we got this one so that checks out we got the second one checks out checks out checks out checks out checks out and the last one also checks out so with that I'm just going to delete this and just plug this in here instead so that we have a nice data tree that we can still use in here. Wait, what? What happens? Oh, right. I just need to. Haha. <laughs> okay, but you do have a. We don't need the top branch because the branches does not align. So with that. We actually modified this a little bit so I'm just going to come in here and quickly do a group and then control s all right so now we're back to the starting point where we should have been at this beginning of this tutorial uh, although we're still missing one last piece uh, preparation stuff that we still need to do if I uh, let me actually do I need to show that nope I need to nope uh, nope yeah, so if I select this, you see that we have the full panels and then we have the cut off panels. But if you zoom in, 
you'll see that we're missing the exception panels on that side. So we have to quickly grab those two, I believe. I can actually not turn that off. It's coming from here. And I'm just going to quickly do a geometry. Um, we'll just give it a name. Uh, we'll give this exception, exception, and panels. And we will also hide this so we don't need to see that one. I'm just going to copy this all the way here. Yeah, like that. Um, I'm going to move these two on that side because we're actually, let's move them down and keep them here. Now to make sure that I'm selecting the right one, I can probably use this one, although I'm not too sure about the X minus two, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll do a, li a list item. We'll see what we're selecting if we do just that. Oh wow, we're actually, uh, we are able to use that. Okay, well, that solves the problem. I was, I didn't, I wasn't hoping, or at least I didn't expect that. Uh, let me check how it's ordered. So first one is at the bottom, so that's good, and the last one is at the top. Okay, well, that's that's that was quite easy to fix. All right, so now we're left with the real. Uh, let me turn that off and turn this on. So now we're left with really the the geometry that we need to work with. So that's good. The next step we want to do is actually to make sure that every level that we have this all these is sorted in their uh, respective levels so what i mean by that is so everything on this floor i want to have everything selected including this one this one and this one in the same group and now they're separated in their own group for example if i do a tree branch right and are these yeah, so the data tree of those is simplified. I think this one needs to. No, it doesn't. But I can graph this. Not flatten, but graph. And then simplify the tree. So that uh, we do this. All right. So first off, um, let's try selecting the first branch. So now this one is checks out because this is the bottom. Does this one check out? That was also check out. That's the bottom. This one also checks out. Oh, wow, that's pretty neat. And uh, uh, you know what? I'm just going to quickly do all three, check all three at the same time in order to make sure that we don't need to run into problems. So I have three selected now. So if we could merge, these two will end up in the same branch. That's good. Same as that one, same as this one, this one, this one, this one, and that one. Well, this one has nothing because there's no end panel there. And this one comes from here. There's no panel there. So that's that's fine. Well, that makes it easier for us. So we just need to do a simple merge. So we'll merge you with you and you. Turn that off. We'll get this here. And then we get our uh, branches. Perfect. All right. Uh, now that we're actually getting to this point where we can start to intersect our plane. So I'm going to grab a component real quick from here, B wrap and plane. Uh, we need to isolate level per level. For, for example, first we need to cut the plane from the top and then we need to select the floor down below and then we cut from the bottom. I hope that makes sense. So what that means is we have six planes and we have seven branches. So every time we need to uh, do a sort of like shifting in a sense, we need to first have always the bottom one and then exclude the top and then vice versa, all the top exclude the bottom. So we can do that very easy with another tree stat. We'll come in here and we'll do another split mask, uh, split tree, sorry. And then we'll do a list item and from the path, first we'll take off the. Oh, I should probably leave that on. First we'll take off the bottom one. Okay, so we're just gonna split this tree from here. Now uh, we're quickly gonna do this because we actually want the negative, not the positive. So now this one is excluding the the very bottom one, as you can see here. So if you split this, for example, if I do now here like that 
uh, we do need to make sure that our yeah we have a problem so this is uh, grafted into tree so we need to graft our plane also to get the perfect line oh I might have to bake something you know for mouse to not move so sporadically so we got the bottom one all we have to do now is we're gonna reverse this we're gonna split again and now well we don't really need that but I just want that so that I can easily easily visualize what I'm seeing so now we're excluding the top one and if we do uh, I can actually delete that if we do this split oh whoa that's not the wrong uh, right input I have to put in this one the reason why this component is failing is because if I select this geometry here, uh, what you see this this includes all the panels here where the plane doesn't intersect, right? Because that, hence the intersection failed. We're going to fix that by well, uh, it's a simple way to fix. So all we got to do is make a double. So I'm going to leave that for the double. So I'm going to copy one here and not include that yep that's what we're gonna do so now we have this uh the data tree seems to be okay we have six well we do have six planes anyway so we might not even need this so i'm just gonna quickly delete that and plug this one here and there we go Perfect. So I'm just going to hide these two. I'm going to hide that one. Actually, looking at those does give me a better sense of volume. So I'm just going to take that and, well, uh, first I'm going to just clean the data tree, the data structure, by first uh, simplifying this. And I'm also going to, I'm not going to flatten this, I'm going to simplify that. I'm going to bring up my trusty param viewer, and this one also. Well, the first uh, thing, is, the good sign is we have equal amount of branches, so that's good. Um, the next thing we want to do is maybe try to trim the tree. Actually, we can merge them and then trim them. I don't think it really matters much. So it's going to do this. We have the same tree. And now we can come in here and trim this tree. We should have six branches. There we go. Now that we have all the lines on the respective branch, and we can test that by going into tree branch. Just do something visual. So I'm just going to randomly select a index, uh, maybe two. And you can see that only one of that level is selected. Now, these are still a lot of separate curves. So the easy way to fix that for us will be to join the curves. Okay, let me bring up my panel and then we can confirm that we have one, one curve each floor, but they're not closed because of that gap right there. So let me turn that back on. So if I quickly now do a connect curve, and then set the G to position. Now that we have a closed curve, and then we can do a boundary surface. We can close all that. Actually, leave that on. And then we have our gap infills for the very top part. Okay. Well, I did say in the beginning it's going to be a short video, but I think it ended up being relatively long still. My apologies for that. Um, but we're at the end of this part, so I'm going to close it here. The only thing I'm going to do is just copy a text here, and then we'll go over here. Um, how do we call the other one? General gap infill. So we'll just call this then crown gap infills. Yeah, a little bit consistency. There we go. And we're just going to group it. All right. And if I turn these back on, we can see what we have. And in the next part, we're really going to start looking into the inside of the crown and then start to finish up this um, tower. Okay, so with that, I'll uh, see you in the next video.